Hi guys, welcome to Learning Electronics Repair and a video sponsored by PCBWay.com. This one I think is going to be quite fun actually. It revolves around a conversation that Detlef and myself had and it also revolves around these PCBs from PCBWay.com which I have on my bench at the moment. These may look rather large but in actual fact these are rather small, okay? And these were built for a project I worked on a couple of years, more than two years ago. I'm just going to show you a bit of one of my very old videos and then we'll get into why we're talking about this again today. And this is me. I just checked actually from December 2022 <laughs> with this video. And if we look at this video, I was actually trying to build a signal injector into a pen. I had a PCB way, Biro, which had effectively ran out of ink. It was a little bit damaged. So I challenged myself to build a signal injector into a pen. I based it on somebody else's project who built it into a tic tac box. That's obviously much easier to do. So I set about building this circuit into a pen. Okay. And here we can see the schematic for my signal injector. So this is quite a simple thing, two transistors wired as a multivibrator or a stable multivibrator. So this oscillates and gives a roughly square wave coming out here via this capacitor, which is to isolate the circuit from anything you might be probing on a PCB. Okay, so that was the signal injector. I then decided to build a prototype on VeroBoard. <laughs> which I then effectively look, sliced up like so, yeah, cut the tracks in half, yeah, that was my prototype I was building, lots of soldering, okay, Detlef says this is a work of art by the way, And it was generating the squarish wave that we expected. Yeah. I then went on to insert this into a pen. As you can see here, it's actually glued in place. Okay. Got the thing built together. Positioning a switch, the uh, switch you press to inject the signal. You can see me soldering this together. <laughs> The switch, a little battery, so I have a little battery, which I think I, yes, looks like I'm taping this around two bits of wire or spring, oh, little bits of Vero board, yeah, to make the battery holder. Sometime and numerous expletives later, I actually get the thing built, okay? I actually get the thing built. As you can see there, trying to get the thing to go together and into my holder if I put the sound on. So it's definitely working. Now let's see if I can get it all together. So let's see. Okay. Yeah. It works. Fingers. Okay, so I have it working. And eventually, with a little bit of effort, I actually managed to get the whole thing in one piece. With an off button. Okay. So that was my prototype. Yeah, easy, I said. Okay. Built on Vero board. So from that, I then went on to actually make a PCB. This one, yeah. And found it's actually a little bit wider and it wouldn't actually fit into the pen. So it's the same schematic just on a PCB. At that point, I think I went, go. Yeah. And then this got put on one side for two and a half years. So why has it come off the side? Well, Detlef and myself were talking about logic probes for whatever reason, and then we got onto signal injectors in pens, and Detlef said, oh, I remember you did this before I moved to the island. Yeah, this was after we'd first met, but before Dad had moved over here, okay, while well, he was enjoying his last winter in Germany, yeah. And um, he said, oh, let's have another go at this, because I can do better than you can. Dad says I can do better than Richard. 
And that said, I'm going to use a microcontroller to do this. Much less components should fit into a pen nicely. That's not available right now. Otherwise, I'm sure you'd be sitting next to me telling you the story, but I'm sure I can tell it well enough. And while Det was designing that, I put together one of these. Okay, one of these. This is the surface mat one built. I've attached two wires. The main reason I didn't have any battery holders to hand and the little welder we have for welding to little lithium cells is at Detlef's house, so I couldn't use it. So just for now, I've just attached this to my bench power supply. But the plan would be that the whole thing, including the battery, fits into the pen. Okay, I'll just show you that this one actually does work. And then let's have a look at Detlef's solution. So here is my injector. The power supply is set to 1.5 volts, which is what this will run on. Okay, it has a little on off switch. Okay, I'll just get the connection to my speakers. You hear that? My PC speakers are not very good and they're not very loud to be honest, but... Uh, Pressing the button. Okay, so it injects a signal. Now let's have a look at the one that Detlef has designed. Okay, and then let's make this a challenge. And this is Detlef's design. Detlef apologised, by the way, he asked me to mention, for his extensive use of nets. This is how he likes to draw schematics. He has a 80 tiny 412 SSF. This is the processor. He has two capacitors, a switch, a battery, and the rest of this is just jumpers or pin headers, okay? Bear in mind, he does need to program this. This is the schematic with his battery, you can see there, okay? And this is how the PCB would look. So we'll send this over to PCBWay.com. He may want to just modify this a little bit but he felt that was about as small as he could get it the space here for a capacitor this is the one that protects the controller from any voltage that might be on the board you are testing okay program header so you only need that while you're programming it so that is Detlef's version although it has less components an actual fact it's almost the same size as the one I have. It's about a millimeter narrower, 0.2 of a millimeter shorter, but wider. And the reason it's wider is because of the battery. So Detlef has a limitation. He needs at least 3.3 volts to drive this directly from a battery at least. And the smallest battery he could find, at least commonly available, was 12 and a half millimeters wide and that I think is too wide for the pen. <laughs> I think Detlef has a problem with that. Whereas I only need 1.5 volts for this version so I can get away with a smaller battery. Okay, I said challenge. So Det and myself both thought that some of you guys out there might like to have a go at this. The challenge is the smallest signal injector, audio signal injector, you can build. Some rules, it has to have a switch or some mechanism by which you press the button to inject the signal. And it has to be battery powered. Or at least portable, but I can only think of battery being the way you want to do that unless you have a little solar panel or something. Hey, I'll leave it to you, but it has to be portable. Yeah, self-powered and have a switch. Other than that, you can design this exactly however you wish. I'm sure it's easy to make this one smaller. I can't speak for debt on his design. I've already figured out how to make this with at least one component less than we see here. 
I think we'll have some rules if you want to put components on both sides of the board. You may wish. The only stipulation is it must be possible to assemble by hand. Yeah. It must be hand assemble. Is it even a word that's assemblable? <laughs> you must be able to build it by hand. Let's say that. Okay. So what do you think, guys? Are you interested? Shall we do this? Um, I'll redesign mine. I'm confident I can get this quite a bit smaller than this. But we will see. Let me know in the comments below if you guys are interested down there. So it's a free reign. However you want to design your own circuit, just with a switch and battery, okay? And it must fit in a pen, a biro. Doesn't have to be a big size biro, but you know, something like this. Uh, that was like a Sharpie type pen. Yeah, as long as it'll fit into something like that, I think that will pass the test, yeah. I think if you're making it to fit into something like this, that'll be disqualified, okay? So, when I say pen, I mean, you know, something like no bigger than that, yeah? How wide is it? Let's have a look. Well, just over a centimetre, 11 millimetres, but bear in mind the plastic will have some thickness. This one has eight centimetres, maybe down there, and possibly a little bit in this bit as well, so you might have quite a bit of uh, dimension there you can go at, okay? That might help you in the battery design. The button can be wherever you want, but it must be able to be assembled by hand. Okay, yeah. Whoever comes up with the smallest, we'll get the PCBs made by PCBWay.com. I'm sure they'll be very happy to make tiny PCBs for us. Let's build this on the channel. Let's see how well it works. As a comparison, also, there's a Sharpie. This is probably a better known brand, but we can say a Sharpie is uh, basically the same size. Close, okay? So, Sharpie size or smaller. Okay, so, let's set a date. Let's say, if you want to have some fun with this, by the beginning of September, where are we now? 23rd of July. Let's say one week into September. Yeah, that gives a little bit of time. Let us know, send your designs in. Whoever gets the smallest one, we'll get them built by PCBWay.com. I'm sure they will love building your tiny PCBs. If anybody comes up with a really innovative design, thinking out of the box with this, maybe not the smallest, but just really innovative, we can also get those built. I tell you what, we can have a look on the live stream closest to that date. So after about a week into September, the next live stream, we can have a look at some of the designs and we'll decide. We can build a few. Yeah, okay. I hope you find that interesting enough to sit there with your iPad on your lap, on your sun lounger, soaking up the sun and the margaritas. Yeah, it's that time of year. But wherever and however you do it, we're just interested to see what you come up with in your design. So let's keep this interactive, guys. Yeah, I think that's what's great about this channel. You guys out there, I'm sure some of you will be interested in having a go with this. Just something to play with. Yeah, I'll be redesigning mine to see what I can get out of that in the way of size. I'm sure Detlef will be having another go with his once he gets the first version tested. And you guys, just let us know what you think down there. Hope you want to join in and I look forward to seeing you all soon again on Learning Electronics Repair. Ciao for now.